The principles of flow are an essential part of the Lean Agile mindset, but how do we optimize flow? Hi guys, my name is James, and welcome to another edition of Agile Soundbites, where we explore bite-sized insights that will help on our Agile journey. Now, flow is a really big deal in Lean, and I know it's a big deal for you too. Let's use an example to illustrate. Put your hands up if you've been on a freeway at peak period, or as some people like to call it, rush hour. Now keep your hands up if that was a fun experience. <laughs> Travelling on a freeway at the busiest time of day is not a fun experience at all. Now freeways are one of the most expensive resources we have and we really want to get the most out of them. And the way we get the most out of our freeways is to optimise the flow of traffic on those freeways. Now, unfortunately, we can't just add lanes when we feel like it, but there are things we can do that can optimise flow. For example, have you ever noticed the uh, traffic lights on the on-ramps leading onto freeways? They're there to actually help regulate the flow of traffic on those freeways. So as frustrating as it is waiting for your turn on the on-ramp to actually get onto the freeway, you're ultimately rewarded for your patience by getting on a um, much smoother flowing freeway which will ultimately get you to your destination faster. The goal of Lean is to deliver customer value in the shortest sustainable lead time. To achieve this, Lean enterprises strive for a state of continuous flow where they can quickly move new system features from concept to cash. So how do we optimise flow in product development? Fortunately, there's several things we can do, including understanding the full value stream, uh, visualising and limiting work in process. Thirdly, managing queue lengths. And fourthly, reducing batch sizes. So let's take a brief look at each of those four, starting with understanding the full value stream. So if we understand the full value stream, we can start to identify delays in our process. And we can also start to identify what uh, Lean calls waste, which is essentially non-value added activities. So if we're stripping delays and non-value activities out of our value stream, then obviously we're going to get things done a whole lot faster. The second way to optimise flow is to visualise and limit work in process. So contrary to popular belief, uh, people are very bad at multitasking, even though they may not realise it. In fact, they've measured it and they found that when um, people change context from, say, one project to another, they can incur a cost of up to 20%. So if we're working in an environment where we're constantly juggling lots and lots of work in process, then in fact it's very, very efficient and it works against optimising flow. So the best way to do um, focus is to um, reduce the number of things people are doing. It'll make them a lot happier and they can deliver value a whole lot sooner. The third way to optimise flow is to manage queue lengths. Now, you know, long queues are bad, period. Uh, customers hate queues. Why? Because it takes them longer to get what they want. Managers hate queues. Why? Because, you know, they spend a lot of time prioritising the work and trying to work out where everything's at. And workers ultimately hate queues as well because um, it tends to make them multitask. So the best thing we can do is try and manage our queue lengths, identify our queue lengths in the process and keep them as small as we possibly can. The fourth and final way to optimise flow is to um, reduce batch sizes. And this actually has a lot of advantages. So if we break things up small, Firstly, we get them through the system a whole lot faster, which is kind of obvious. The second one, which may not be as obvious, is it actually reduces variance because everything is inherently has a little bit of variability. But if we batch lots of things up together, then we're going to get the accumulation of all that vari variation, which is not going to be good. So we really want to reduce our batch sizes to get them through the system faster, to reduce our variation. And thirdly, um, by getting things through the system faster, we're actually improving the, um, our feedback loops. We're getting a lot more of them and they're a lot quicker and that's ultimately building our knowledge which is what it's all about. After this brief overview, I trust you now appreciate why the principles of flow are so important to a lean agile mindset. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this agile soundbites. If you did, please click the like button below. Thanks for coming. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.